Well, hey, it's uh, Simeon here. I wanted to give you this really interesting update on the whole area of cold fusion. I was fortunate enough to be able to attend a meeting of the Society for Scientific Exploration um, a couple of days ago, and one of the invited speakers was this uh, really interesting guy, Vittorio Violante, from an organization in Italy, the ENEA, you can look it up, that studies kind of alternative energy systems. It's an official government agency that looks at new energy systems. And what Ms. Dr. Violante uh, showed us is that after many years of testing, they've found that cold fusion really works. Now, you know this is the highly controversial system of generating low energy fusion from deuterium, deuterium, heavy water, and palladium rods, a type of metal. And what, well, it was first discovered, you know, many years ago, and then most recently it made headlines in uh, 1989 when Fleischmann and Pons at the uh, University of Utah made headlines by saying they'd rediscovered cold fusion and they received a lot of criticism because instead of submitting it for peer review, the University of Utah wanted to go right away to a press conference uh, because they thought the findings were so significant. And Fleischmann and Pons were heavily criticized and really forced to leave the United States and move to France. And Cold fusion was heavily ridiculed ever since that time. Even a couple of years before Scientific American had said it, it, w it wouldn't work. The New York Times came out with an article shortly before Fleischmann and Pons were going to meet with members of the U.S. government and congressional committee to look at it at as an alternative energy source. Anyway, the long and the short of it is cold fusion was labeled as a type of pathological science. Some people called it junk science. And everyone said it was a kind, you know, kind of fraudulent or pseudoscience and that it wouldn't work. But the truth is that it does work. And what Dr. Violante showed us is that what it depends on is what he calls resonance, which is the impurities in the palladium rods, whether it's rhodium or other types of metallurgical elements, affect the resonance of the palladium with the deuterium. It's so-called the doping, which is what material scientists talk about when they put impurities into a semiconductor, it makes them work better. In any case, the crystalline shape of the impurities in the palladium rods affects whether it works or not. And Violante showed us many slides over and over again where they get a higher level of heat and energy output than you would expect from a chemical reaction. In some cases, much, much higher. It, cold fusion apparently puts out about 50 times as much energy as you would expect from a chemical reaction. It works apparently by creating a fusion reaction between the uh, subatomic particles from the palladium with the deuterium, and when they fuse, they release energy. Now, Violante told me when I talked to him later on that he's a hot fusion guy, as he put it. He is from hot fusion research. Now, hot fusion is something that our own government has put billions of dollars into, as, many, as well as other governments, to try to simulate conditions on the sun as maybe an alternative source of energy, a fusion reaction instead of fission, you know, which is our nuclear reactors use fission and release radioactivity and all sorts of issues associated with that, disposing of the waste. But fusion is supposed to be a lot cleaner with no waste products that are radioactive. But they've only got hot fusion as of this video to work for about a trillionth of a second a couple months ago, which isn't very long. But this cold fusion reaction keeps going. And so we now know that um, cold fusion really works. I think this guy is a real authoritative source on it, especially since he comes from hot fusion. Now, many of us suspected that the reason why MIT and the patent office said it wouldn't work is because those guys are heavily invested in hot fusion. Maybe it was it's their own vested interests. But in any case, um, forget everything you heard about being junk science and pathological science. 60 Minutes, to their credit, was pretty close in their 2009 show, you know, the weekly show, 60 Minutes, 
revealed to us that many companies are still studying cold fusion. The U.S. Navy has always been interested in it, and many companies in Israel have been studying it and getting these anomalous results. And now we know that these anomalies are due. It's as as Violante told us. It's not whether it works. It's just what are the conditions when it works or stops working, and those have have to do with the crystallog the crystalline shape of the impurities in the materials and the resonance of those particular materials. So it works. It's just a question of fine-tuning it so it works reliably. And anyway, I thought you'd find that really interesting because we live in a society that's often very critical and actually very harsh to new scientific discoveries. And it looks, after all this time, that Fleischmann and Pons were right. Maybe they couldn't reproduce it reliably at the time they invented it, but the principle and the actual... Uh, operation of cold fusion is now an established scientific fact. Now, if you go to Wikipedia and look up cold fusion, they still talk about it being hypothetical and uh, uh, a process that's just theoretical, but that's it's out of date. It really works. It's just a question of fine-tuning it to get it work on a more reliable basis. Okay, I thought you'd enjoy that, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care for now. Bye.